Good morning, everyone. I hope you're doing very well in the Lord. What a wonderful adventure it is, because with the Lord living in us and we in the Lord, life is just so much richer. And one particular aspect that I'd like to point out is we learn so much more going through him, going through life with him. Of course, today is uh, today's reflection is uh, Pentecost Sunday. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. Here the account is of the astounding scene of Pentecost and the events that flowed from it. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit that gave them the gift to proclaim the mighty acts of God. And those who were listening heard them in their own tongue, which were many. The Almighty God demonstrated his might with, by filling the room with a noise like a strong driving wind. And the Holy Spirit appeared to them in, as tongues of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, John the Baptist says, The Messiah will baptize with the Holy Spirit and a fire. It will burn up the chaff. That is, those who refuse to repent. In this Pentecost passage, however, I think that the fire that the Holy Spirit brings to the apostles and Mary will, will be an intensity of enthusiasm to preach the good news of Jesus Christ, an intensity that this world cannot quench. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2b relates the mighty wind that swept over the waters. I think that in that passage, as well as the one for Pentecost. The mighty wind signals the entry of the Almighty God onto the scene. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3b to 7, then 12 to 13, this passage begins, No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. As I understand it, Paul is virtually saying the same thing Jesus says in John uh, chapter 15, verse 5c, without me, you can do nothing. That is nothing good. Without God, we can sin, but not do anything uh, good. The Spirit uses us as, a vis as visible instruments to do his good works in this world, each of us in various and sundry ways. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. In doing our assigned part together, we build the one church through the work of the Spirit in us, who enables us to function as one coordinated entity for the good of all. It's unity and diversity. Jesus says in John chapter 17, verse 22, I have given, uh, I've given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one. In Romans chapter 8, verse 8 to 17, one of the quotes from there is, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. According to biology, human beings are classified as the animal Homo sapiens. Animal life has a beginning and an end where it rots, and the remains go back into the soil. Spiritual life has a beginning but no end. For each one of us, our lives are a journey from the beginning to the end, either by choosing to live the animal life by pleasing our bodies, that is, to live according to the flesh and rejecting what God wants of us, or to choose to live the spiritual life by pleasing God. Those who daily choose to have the Spirit dwell in them receive the spiritual life from Him and are led by Him to become children of God through the power of the Spirit. As children of God, we become heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. By choosing Christ, we alienate ourselves from the world, which will reject and even punish us for making that decision. 
in the gospel reading uh, first one john chapter 20 verse 19 to 23 after the resurrection jesus appears to the disciples to commission them to preach the gospel saying peace be with you as the father has sent has sent me uh, so i send you then he breathed on them and said to them receive the holy spirit whose sins you forgive are forgiven them whose sins you retain are retained first he gives them the holy spirit and then the power to forgive sins when they went out to preach the gospel they brought with them the power and guidance of the holy spirit forgiving sins was a power that only God could exercise prior to this. Now the Holy Spirit makes them instruments of his forgiveness so that the converts to Christianity could have the Spirit dwell within them. In the second gospel reading, uh, second choice, John chapter 14, verse, verses 15 to 16, and 23b to 26. Jesus says to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. To have God as our God, we must love him with the love that he gives us. And obey his will, because his will is love. Jesus said, uh, quoting here, The advocate, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you all that I told you. The apostles and all of us who teach the faith throughout the ages will be informed and guided by the Holy Spirit uh, so that we will not stray from the truth. The Catholic Church and its officials, the Bible, the holy buildings and books, the sacraments are instruments of the Spirit to move us day by day on the road to heaven. We have God the Holy Spirit as the, insur as the insurance from God, uh, from God the Father and the Son, to keep faithful and enriched for the work that God once accomplished on the earth. The Holy Spirit enables us to live out each day in God's goodness. What a wonderful gift he is.